a 760 by Hanstein. Steiner got through with a little bit less with 656. He is Chris Barnes. I'm Dave Lamont. We welcome you inside Sun Valley Lanes in Lincoln, Nebraska. What are the kind of the house characteristics here, Chris? You expect high scores? Yeah, I do expect high scores here. This fr this surface here is a pretty high friction AMF HPL surface that's about eight to ten years old, but the head panels are brand new, and so the ball gets through the front. The ball saves lots of energy, and really creates angle down lane. So the freshman will start us off. Slipped away from that four pin, but that's got to be one of the toughest shots for anyone to throw. It's the first shot to start a show. I think that's the toughest shot in all of bowling, no matter where you're at. As you can see here, just a little bit inside of target. He's crossing in between second and third arrow. Just a little bit high, leaving the four pin. Really not a bad effort. 90% of all first shots will be left to target. Go to the spare ball. Always good when you can walk away. He has not bowled a 300 game in his career, as high as 299. And we get our first look at Joe Steiner, a junior from North Conway, New Hampshire. He has bowled 10 300s in his career and has a high series of 812. He's from Midland University. Fremont, Nebraska, not far at all from here. Perfect start, wiped out the 10 pin. He takes it considerably right of target, didn't he? Well, all these guys got a lot of hand. They got a pretty high rev rate, and I really like this guy's game. He stands on one foot every shot, really posts up the shot, allows him to repeat much better than most players. For Steiner to start. Mom and Dad behind him there on the right. And a little early pressure on the Boise, Idaho native. There's Mom and Dad for Joe Steiner. That's Stephen and Julia's mom. And Lucas brought his mom, Paula, and Mona, his grandmother. through the head there. Now you mentioned the first shot's going to be left to target. Understandably, that one also left to target. Yeah, and that's just a little bit of nerves. As you can see here, it comes over the top of it just a little bit. That one's about the 14th board. He's trying to get it out around 11, 12 at the arrows, moving out to around 7, 8 at the break point. Oh, my. It just did not go. He went to the spare ball. Well, Chris, tell us about uh, the pattern that these competitors are bowling on today. Well, this is a 41-foot pattern, and you'll see most of the players playing in this zone right here. Now, as they get down to second and third matches, they'll move in to uh, in around this area, around the third, between the third and fourth area. It's 41 feet. Their break points will be right around this eight. So Hanstein in a hole after the single pin miss. Come on, the hole. That's a way to recover. The only thing he could do is turn it off and turn it back on again. And he did exactly that. Joe Steiner has a double to start and has the early 22 pin advantage in the opening match of the USBC Men's Singles Championship. The USBC Intercollegiate Singles Championships is brought to you by Cubica AMF. The power of partnership. Track. Evolutionary. Revolutionary. By Hammer. Nothing hits like a hammer. There you see the situation. 
from Midland University, Joe Steiner is rolling right through 10 straight back in the third and fourth frame. Lucas Hanstein just having a very difficult time, I think, just dealing with the, the, the pressure of the situation and the nerves. It's showing. Whereas Joseph Steiner, who has bowled before on television in a different with a different school, Saginaw, seems very, very relaxed. Well, yes, the last time he was on TV, he was bowling with Dan McClellan, now a tour star, and he threw five out of six on that show, and he's picked up right where he left off. That was in the Baker team format, and Dan McClellan listed as Joe Steiner's bowling role model. Ringer to end the run, but just put the front four up while your opponent is struggling has given him a comfortable advantage. And a quick word there, that's grandma. I thought it was interesting when he came out to be introduced to us, he hugged grandmother first, not mom. So the power of the grandparent, never to be underestimated. Routine cover on the 10, no problem for Joe Steiner. And here's what Joseph did in the tournament. Qualified 19th out of 24, but that's got him in the door. Took out Aaron Johnston in a, just by three, Cody Shoemaker in a comfortable victory, and then Matthew Kruger, 656 to 627. And Steiner's an experienced bowler. Mentioned he's a junior. He's won the Las Vegas shootout. Considers himself the emotional leader of his team. And he's just on right now. Yeah, he's got this pair figured out. He's repeating shots, and you know, a 60-10 lead will uh, will help make you comfortable. Now, this is something we noticed earlier about uh, Lucas uh, Hanstein, and it, is that common? Yeah, there's a few guys that do that, but uh, most of the time, their shorter guys are trying to create a lot of foot speed. Uh, somebody as tall as that normally doesn't have to be that far back. That's his best ball by far of the match. Well, you've probably noticed the haircut, I'm guessing. This is sort of an annual event. As they ask you to fear the Mohawk. We talked with Lucas about that rather unique do. It's it's up there. It's it's just kind of my thing. It's my I've been doing it for a few years now. People seem to recognize me by it and I I like it and so I go with it. I asked mom, his, his mother Paula, about that. She says, oh, yeah, I love the haircut. She, but what happens is when the tournaments are, are over, he shaves the mohawk part off, grows his hair back to normal, and then re-mohawks, I guess, if that's a verb. It is now. It might be too little too late for him, but at least he's found his shot. Yeah, and that's just a product of nerves in his first couple of shots. They got him inside a target, then he made a move and made a good shot and split off that too. And it just kind of, it's one of those waterfall effects where one uh, one bad shot leads to a couple of more. And in this case, Joe didn't give me any room, any room to breathe. Having a little right of target and wait a minute. What happened here? What did you watch? He's been crossing right around uh, the 15th board, but he's actually moved a little bit left. He got that one right of target, a little bit firm. Natalie's a very difficult 2 4 6 10. Oh. Well, do you want updated bowling news faster than anyone else? Get all the latest in USBC headlines and more on Twitter by going to twitter.com slash USBC. So after the first real serious mistake by Steiner, is there any hope here at all for uh, Lucas Hanstein? Hanstein still has a possible 215 if he strikes all the way out. Joe is on a 217 pace. That's just a few pins and count. There's still a little bit of hope. There may be a little bit more. Now, what's happened here at the beginning? He was absolutely locked in. One of the things that changes on TV that doesn't happen during qualifying is that the oil heats up with all these lights. It's starting to hook more in the front. He's moved left. 
But all that oil is now in the back end of the lane. His ball's not recovering from that spot that it was earlier. He's gone light twice in a row. He's going to have to make a move either right with his feet or he's going to have to slow down and give his ball time to hook. The 2 a 10 virtually impossible, so he does the best he can do to get the most count. Smart move there. Back-to-back -back open frames. And you see it was about 65 pin difference, and all of a sudden Lucas Hanstein is now within 31. He qualified 23rd out of 24th, but then when it came into match play, he was tough, particularly at the end. I mean, he had to shoot a 750 to survive to get to this point to the semifinals. Unbelievably bad break, a stone eight. This is the same shot that was drifting high on him earlier in the match. Now it stays there. It's just slightly inside a target, but it's really a good shot here. And chops the five right off the eight. You saw a lot of those this week in the center for some reason. I go back to, if you think about an important shot early in the match, and he missed a single pin spare in the second frame. Maybe something that ends up costing him now with Steiner struggling and Lucas Hanstein getting his shot. The yeah. winner of this match will meet either Jeffrey Young or Anthony Fiorenzo for the USBC Intercollegiate Men's Singles Championships. There's Grandma. Mona. She looks intense. Well, a couple of nice shots there. He's really, really settled in, and that stone eight's a huge, huge bad break. He would be down to 11 pins mm. back going into the 10th frame. Completely changed this match. So his max is 194. So there's going to be a little pressure on Steiner to mark. Back to back open frames. Trouble. Oh, trouble again, his third straight split. And he's making what appears to be to be the same mistake every shot now. Yeah, and that's that oil traveling. You just can't believe how fast it can get down on lane, uh, down lane on TV sometimes. What he's doing is not that much different from what he was doing earlier in the game. The oil moving down lane has made his ball wiggle. He's paid the price three times in a row. This one could be made. Nope. Three consecutive opens. Now his max is 205. And there you go. 20 pin fill to shut out Lucas Hanstein. And it looked for a second like Joseph Steiner was going to throw an unbelievably high score. And he has struggled finding the pocket in his last three frames. difficult shot. Three nine. Pretty natural reaction there after you leave three straight two ten split combinations. This one's just inside of target. Crosses about the 18th board. Never gets it going to the right. And it's got to be rough on the moms and dads. I mean they can't do anything about it. <laughs> it's always worse watching than it is playing I think. If he doesn't cover this, this match is completely different. Beautifully done. Well, that's just a nice shot under pressure. The key is what do you do now? And now he's seen his ball hooked early, so I don't think he wants to move right. Okay. What I would do in this situation is actually slow down a little bit, move a little left, and give your ball time to make the corner. I think that's an easier move in this situation than trying to move up right, knowing that you have hook left and all to the right. A strike for the victory. Oh, 
nice shot. What a shot by Joseph Steiner to get the victory. He goes through to the finals. Recovered it when he had to have it the most. Joseph Steiner will be and is in the USCC Intercollegiate Men's Singles Championship match.